This is the second part of a two-part video in which I'm going to give you 10 kingdom principles that are proven to help you achieve greater financial abundance and will give you the resources you need to complete your kingdom assignment here on earth. If you are serious about wanting to understand and walk in the abundant life that Jesus promised in John chapter 10, verse 10, without getting into selfishness, greed, or secular get-rich-quick schemes, then this video is for you. Transforming your business from struggling to success and from success to significance. If you watched the first part of this video, then you know that I am not promoting or advocating a prosperity gospel message or putting lipstick on a worldly and get-rich-quick scheme that is rooted in selfishness, greed, and self-promotion. Instead, we spent a considerable amount of time defining what success in your kingdom business assignment really meant and how you would go about measuring it. We stated that the abundant life that Jesus was referring to was a life spent abiding in his zoe or abundant life. It was in his abiding presence that we find his abundance for all areas of our life, including our finances. But apart from him, there is no abundant life or success. Apart from him, you could have a whole lot of money, but still be broke and be unsuccessful in your kingdom assignment here on earth. We talked about the increase you should be looking for in your personal life each year as you abide in him. This included your love for God and man, your intimate time with the Lord, the joy of the Lord, dying to yourself, obedience in the small things and being led by the Holy Spirit instead of your soul and growing in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We said that others should be able to see this increase in your personal life. We talked about how to measure the success of your kingdom business assignment by measuring it against how successful you are in meeting your vision and mission statements and then using your financial statements as a measure of the overall health of your business. Acknowledging that you can make a lot of money in your business, but not fulfill the purpose of what the Lord is trying to accomplish in your business. But we also said that at some point, you're going to need an abundance of financial resources in order to complete your kingdom assignment here on earth. And you're going to want to know how to do that using kingdom principles of financial success. In part one, we gave three of those principles, which included all good things are received through faith, the just shall live by faith and ask in accordance with his will. In this second part of the video, we will address the next seven kingdom principles for financial success, starting with ask, seek, and knock. Although we receive all things by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, there are some things that asking alone will not accomplish. Some things you will need to seek out and some things will only come after knocking on doors. Matthew 7 verses 7 to 8 says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If God gives you a God idea to put into a business plan, don't expect the first investor who reads your business plan to see the hand of God written all over it. Sometimes God wants you to seek and knock on doors so that you'll be able to appreciate the incredible favor he is giving you. When a door opens for you that would not open in the natural, then you know the favor of God is operating in your life. But in order to get there, you may have to seek and knock on a few doors to obtain the thing God already wants you to have. Seeking and knocking are not actions you do to get a reluctant God to help you they are things you do as part of what God wants to do in your life. Expect some things to come to you just by asking for them. Others will be obtained only by seeking them. Others will not come until you have knocked on many doors. So keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking to obtain the abundant life Jesus promised you. Persistence is a characteristic of the wealthy, and they seek and knock a whole lot better than we do. The fifth principle is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Grace money, that's what I call it. Unexpected money that comes to you from out of nowhere. Don't you just love it? Who doesn't? I doubt there's a person in the world who doesn't have a prayer list that includes a large amount of grace money coming in for some purpose. However, grace money is not without its limitations and drawbacks. And like the allowance our parents gave us when we were young, it was never intended to be the primary way we obtain money and wealth in our lives. The way the Lord generally provides wealth to you is not through grace money, but through investing in people and increasing their value. 
the more people you serve and the greater the value they perceive they have received from your products and services, the greater return to you. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge are the keys to understanding what you should be doing, who you should be doing it to, and how you should be doing it. They will show you how to give these people the greatest value for your service while providing you with the greatest return on your investment in those people. Whatever the financial issue, God wants you to seek Him to obtain the wisdom to understand your fundamental problem and His solution for solving it. You may think you have a cash flow problem, but what you really have is a wisdom problem. This means you have a shortage of God problem. Get into His presence and seek wisdom, understanding, and knowledge and deal with the root of the problem and the cash flow issues will be resolved. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge are the keys to understanding what you should be doing, who you should be doing it to, and how you should be doing it. They will show you how to give them the greatest value for your service while providing you with the greatest return on your investment in those people. The sixth principle is, what do you have of value? What talents did the Lord leave you with? It is interesting that we describe the special abilities people have as their talents. The origin of the word talent in Latin and Greek was a weight of money. A talent of silver or gold was about 72 pounds of the precious metal. I don't know how talents of money evolved into becoming talents of special abilities in a language, but perhaps somewhere along the way, someone realized the special talents and abilities the Lord has given us could be exchanged or transferred into wealth and money. It seems the talents the Lord gave to each of us were intended to be used to provide valuable service to others and thereby provide a financial return to us. Whatever talents the Lord gave you, He wants you to put them to work until He returns. These talents include the special abilities, intellect, people skills, and even financial assets that you have. If you want to become wealthy, you need to take stock in your true value. What unique combination of talents and assets do you have and how can they be used to advance the kingdom of God? You need to take inventory of your talents because this is what you are called to put to work and this is generally the primary way the Lord will bless you financially. The law of stewardship applies here. Be faithful with what he is giving you and he will give you more. To those who claim they have none, even what they have will be taken from them. Remember, as Proverbs 18 verse 16 says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The seventh principle is don't eat everything in the fruit. In the Bible, fruit is symbolic of a blessing or harvest. The money you're looking for is the fruit or harvest of the service you provide to people. However, not everything in the fruit is meant to be consumed by you. The same can be said about your financial fruit, your money. It is not meant to be consumed entirely by you. Even under the Mosaic law, not everything the Israelites received was meant to be consumed by them. There were multiple tithes and offerings they were required to give and laws about harvesting that prevented them from gleaning everything in their land. They were required to leave some of the harvest for the poor, the widows, and the aliens. They were required to open their hand and give generously to the poor. This was found in Leviticus 19 verses 9 to 10 and Deuteronomy 15 verses 10 to 11. The Lord wants us to be good stewards of his finances and bring increase to his kingdom, but not at the cost of forsaking the poor and the needy. The business people we work with who have been the most blessed financially and personally are also the most generous people. These people never assume their financial harvest is meant just for them. They instinctively know they are called to share their harvest with others. This includes worthy causes in the community, along with providing for the needy and the poor. These people would never consider eating everything in the fruit. They know that everything in the fruit has a purpose in the kingdom. The eighth principle is don't tempt God. This is one that goes over most Christians' heads. As stewards of the king's finances, it would only make sense that we would never spend a dime without asking the Lord what He wants us to do with His money. If we never spend a dime without seeking His permission, we would save ourselves from a lot of financial worry and embarrassment. Instead, many of us spend the money as if it was ours to spend and end up tempting or testing God. This is found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, Luke chapter 4, verse 12, and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9. So how do Christians tempt God? By following their self-will and doing what they want to do and then defending their actions with scripture just as the devil did in the desert with Jesus. This is especially true when it comes to spending money. 
I've seen many Christian business owners who bought new cars, homes, and even other businesses when they lacked the finances and specific direction from the Lord to do so. This is not faith, but presumption. They are tempting God to provide for them in a way and a time of their choice and not His. This is not how the kingdom of heaven operates. We are called to pray His will is done here on earth, not our will. We must leave it up to Him as to when and how He determines to provide for us. His ways are not our ways, and His timing is not our timing. We must learn to live in accordance with His will and not ours. Don't tempt God by spending His money without seeking His direction. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you can come up with to support your argument for self-will. As Romans 8.14 says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The ninth principle is owe no man nothing but your love. Debt is a terrible taskmaster and a burden the Lord does not want you to carry. The abundant life Jesus promised is one with burdens which are light and not heavy. Proverbs 22, 7 says, The rich rules over the poor and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. What do you do if you owe someone money but cannot afford to pay them? Remember the second commandment and treat others the same way you want them to treat you. This is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Go to them and explain your situation. Keep them informed of your situation, and when you believe, you'll be able to make the payment. If you can't pay it at all, explain that to them and ask for forgiveness. Don't run from them, run to them. Learn from your mistakes and remember to avoid future debt. As stewards of his financial resources, we need to ensure we are led by the Holy Spirit in everything we do. Do not borrow money without hearing from him first, do not invest in anything without having heard from him first. Be extremely cautious and wary about accumulating debt. As Romans 13 verse 8 says, Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. The tenth principle is have a win-win mentality. In the kingdom, we are called to love the people we are doing business with and to treat them as we would want to be treated ourselves. In order for this to happen, we need to ensure we have our business partners and our customers' best interests at heart when we are doing business with them. We need to see the deal from their perspective and ensure that they are getting what they want from the deal. We need to ensure they are truly satisfied with the deal and not just going along with it because they can't find anything else at the moment. Anything less than their satisfaction will result in a disgruntled business partner or customer down the road. The world calls this type of business negotiation a win-win transaction. There was a time when I took great pride in haggling with someone to get a better deal for myself. Now I like to ensure the people I deal with are getting at least what they want and preferably more. I have given contractors more than the amount they bid in their proposal. They often seem confused as if they didn't think I heard them correctly the first time. I heard them correctly, but now I want everyone to enjoy the experience of doing business with me. I always try to provide more value than what they are expecting. I always try to treat the people I do business with the same way I want to be treated myself. This is the way favor is received and financial abundance is generated in the kingdom of heaven. There you have it, 10 kingdom principles for financial abundance in your life. When you learn to abide in Him and implement these financial principles of success, you too will start walking in the Zoe life, the God kind of life that Jesus mentioned in John 10.10, 10, and live in it abundantly. For more principles of success, please see my book, Kingdom Business Success. I'll leave a link below. If this video has been of some help to you, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. If there are any other topics you'd like to see discussed relating to kingdom principles for financial abundance, please let me know. Until then, be blessed and keep doing business His way.